Hey everyone, it's Dr. Angela here. Hey, I read an article, um, it came through my Facebook feed a couple of days ago, and it just made so much sense to me that I wanted to talk to you about it and tell you a little bit about it um, and see if you might uh, gain some benefit from it the way I did. It was an article written in the Harvard Business Review, and it was an interview by a man named David Kessler, who actually worked really closely with Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. And um, if you don't know who she is, she was the one who discovered the five stages of grief, okay? And so um, he worked very closely with her. He actually ended up, after she passed away, he added on a sixth stage of grief, which we'll talk about in a minute. But um, what, what they talked about is that what we are experiencing could be described as grief. And that made so much sense to me. Like, think about it. You, um, you are not able to go uh, to work. Many of us aren't able to go to work. So we are sort of clustered here at home. We're not in our usual routines. We're feeling that loss. We're feeling that loss of our routine. You aren't able to go to restaurants or you're not able to go um, over to friends' house, friends' houses. You're not able to socialize the way you usually do. That's a loss. There's grief there. Um, you might be um, feeling a loss of safety and security, a financial loss, okay? That's loss. Um, you might be feeling what's called anticipatory grief, which is, um, it, which is um, grief that you're anticipating in the future. So for example, since things, you know, like you don't know what's going to happen next, um, is, who do you love who might end up getting COVID? Like is anybody that you know or love going to die? So there's that anticipatory grief. And the interesting thing about what's going on right now is that we're all going through this at the same time. It's not just, I'm, think back to, um, you know, when, when uh, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans and Southern Texas, um, the people who live there were dealing with their loss and their grief. The rest of us in the rest of the world, rest of the part of the country, we were sympathetic and empathetic, but we weren't experiencing that loss at the same time. This is a different situation because we have the entire world right now that is caught up in this pandemic of COVID. And um, we are all experiencing a collective sense of insecurity and loss and grief and anxiety about the future. Okay. So, so, um, so what can we do? What can we do to help ourselves feel better through all of this? Right? So the first thing that you can do is to just recognize that naming it as grief can be very, very helpful because if you understand the stages of grief, you can understand better what you're going through. So here are the stages of grief. Um, first is denial. So in the beginning, there was a lot of denial here in the States for sure. Like this was a, this was going on in China and this was going on in the far East and then it was Italy, but it hadn't hit here yet. Well, now it's here. So we can't really be in denial anymore. It's here. Um, but denial is one of those, you know, like this isn't going to affect me. I'm, I'm going to be fine. Denial. The second one is anger. So the next stage of grief is anger. Um, you might find yourself feeling angry at times angry at the unfairness of, um, you know, maybe you were laid off or, you know, maybe there is unfairness going on as far as your concern about having to stay home instead of being able to get to do what you want to do. Um, those who I'm sure the Olympic athletes are not happy at all because they're not going to get to compete in the Olympics this year and they've been training all this time. So there's anger. Um, next is bargaining. So, okay. If I, stay in my house for two weeks and do exactly what you say. Okay. Maybe it's going to be three weeks. Maybe it's going to be four weeks. If I just do what you tell me to do, everything's going to be okay. Right. That's bargaining. Okay. And then there's sadness. 
sadness. So I was talking with a woman this morning. Um, we had a virtual visit and she was telling me how sad her daughter was because her daughter is a senior in high school and isn't going to get to graduate. So there's sadness. I know I felt a lot of sadness because my mother just had her 90th birthday and we couldn't have a birthday party for her. We had to do it. We, we did the next best thing. We had it online, but it was sad that, that we couldn't have her party to all together. Okay. Um, the next stage of grief is acceptance. And that's where you just, um, you said, okay, you know, this is the way it's going to be. And how am I going to manage it? And you start thinking about ways that you're going to manage it and you move through acceptance. And then the sixth stage of grief that got, it, got added on after Dr. Kubler-Ross passed away is meaning. How can I make meaning of this? How do I make meaning of this grief? So for example, um, I have seen a lot on my Facebook feed of people who have been making meaning of this, um, you know, noticing how much more compassionate we are and noticing like the, there was a video that came through just today as another one of those videos of people making music on their balconies and the whole community sort of chipping in to sing. And um, it's just wonderful. Um, people are posting pictures of various cities and how the air is getting cleaner as we're not moving around so much. So there's a lot of meaning to be made in this. And so you might find that you might be feeling high sometimes when you are in the acceptance and meaning stages and you might be crashing low. These stages are not necessarily linear, okay? So, so be aware of that. What do you do if anticipatory grief takes over and you're just really, really scared about the future? Here's what you're going to do. You're going to move yourself to the present moment the present moment, what's going on right now. And you use your senses to do that. So you look around you and you pick five things that you can see. What are five things that you can see? I can see a chair, I can see a lamp, I can see my computer, I can see my camera, I can see a light. What are five things that you can hear? Maybe there's a plane going overhead or a dog barking in the background or some people talking. What are um, five things that you can feel? Okay, so you just take your senses like that. Can you feel your breath moving in and out of your lungs? Bring yourself to the present moment and think about those things that you have control over. Okay, so you don't have control over the stock market, you don't have control over how fast COVID spreads, you don't have control over your neighbor. You don't have control over that person in the grocery store. But what you do have control over is staying six feet away from other people and washing your hands really regularly. You have control over what goes in your mouth. You have control over what you eat. Okay. You have control over how much sleep you're getting. You have control over whether or not you're exercising. You have control for how much news you choose to watch, okay? So take control of the things that you have control with each day, one day at a time. What do I have control over today? What do I have control over today? What decisions can I make today that are gonna serve me today, okay? And that's how you do this, one day at a time. Allow yourself to feel your emotions. So. When you notice that you're feeling angry, don't try to stuff it with food. Allow yourself to feel that anger. Give yourself five or 10 minutes to let that anger move through you. If you feel sad, allow yourself to feel sad. Give yourself a few minutes to just let the sadness move through you, and it will. And then go do something that you have control over, okay? So that's how you make it through one day at a time. Um, this will be over. Next year at this time, hopefully there will be a vaccine. We'll be looking back on all of this and we'll be thinking, wow, can't believe we made it through that. Um, these are unprecedented times and uh, it will get better. I can promise you that. Um, but in the meantime, you want to con keep control over what you have control over. Stay in the present moment. 
make sure you're feeding yourself really, really good healthy food so that your immune system is up to par. And um, that's all for today. Okay. Y'all take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.